Hi everyone, welcome back to the Java class. So let us continue the journey to learn multi-threading in Java programming language. In today's session, you will learn a very powerful and important concept that is known as inter-threaded communication. So let us understand what is it. So far, what we have done, we have created multiple examples in order to create multiple threads. So in those cases, the multiple threads were synchronized also and were running independently. Means they have the single flow of controls. They were not communicating to each other. They were not exchanging some messages. So in today's session, using inter-threaded communication, you will learn how two threads will communicate with each other or how will they share the data from one thread to another thread. So what is the concept of inter-threaded communication? It is a process by which multiple threads share information and coordinate their activities. And this is very important and essential for concurrent programming where multiple threads execute simultaneously and need to collaborate efficiently without running into data corruption, deadlock or inconsistent state. So Java provide a very elegant process in order to implement the inter-threaded communication with the help of methods like a wait method, a notify method and notify all method. So let us understand with the help of a programming example how to implement inter-threaded communication and how will you use the wait, notify and notify all methods. So let us move to the Eclipse ID in order to understand this concept. Okay, so in order to understand the concept of wait and notify methods, we have created an example of banking application. So we have created a class banking. Inside it, we have define some variable as a static that is a balance initially the balance is zero or we are adding two methods one method is to withdraw some amount and one method is to deposit some amount right or inside a main class we will just create or we will create an instance of a thread and we will start the thread so let us complete this program in order to understand the concept of wait and notify so here this is a banking resource and inside it we have a balance variable so for example you have some account right or inside your account multiple threads would like to perform some deposit operations and the withdraw operations so first in order to deposit or in order to withdraw some amount your operations must be in synchronized so first you will define the both method as synchronized. So this is a mandatory condition when multiple threads are trying to access your accounts in order to perform some withdraw or deposit functions. So you have to create two functions, the withdraw functions and deposit function, both function must be synchronized. So at least one thread will use a withdraw function or one thread, only one thread will use the deposit function at one time. So let me just create the multiple threads now that will access these resources, your bank balance light. So I'm creating a thread that is bank thread one, right? So I'm just creating a bank thread one by extending that will extend, extends a thread class, right? So this is your thread inside it. I am just creating an object of banking, right? Banking, banking, I am just defining it. So now I will just add a constructor over here. So just I will add a constructor over here by using a field banking. So you can remove this super, it is not required. Now you will override the body of this thread. You will go to the source, override run method so let us move forward here you can remove this body or inside it what we are doing you can just perform some withdraw operation with the help of an object banking dot withdraw right so you can withdraw some amount for example i am writing here the 1500 right so this is the body of a bank thread one or in the similar way you can create one more thread that will perform some deposit operation so this is bank thread 2 so here this constructor will be a little bit change 
for inside this you will just call the deposit function so i will call deposit or you are just depositing five thousand dollar inside this so these two threads we have created right that will utilize this shared resource right the banking class shared resource are the withdraw and the deposit function right so let me just come to the main class or inside it you will create the different object of a class like like bank thread one or you can write t1 thread one is equal new bank thread one or inside it you will pass the object of it so first let me just create the instance of banking here right so how will you create the instance of banking 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 is equal the new banking right so now this instance you can pass inside it in the similar way you can create the instance of bank thread 2 you can create thread 2 is equal the new bank thread or inside it you will pass the object of banking okay so this is thread right so T H R E A D, right? This is a thread too. Now, in order to start both the threads, you will just call the start function. So you know very well how to start the thread. So you will just write thread dot start. Okay. So your program is completed. What we have done so far, we have a bank class, right? That contains some withdraw and deposit function. Both are synchronized. And here you can see we have created two threads one is calling the withdraw function and one is just depositing some money inside the main class we are just creating the instance of both the threads and we are starting both threads so let us run this program and let's see what will be the output of it right so let us see what is the output of it so here we go it is showing withdrawal successful the current balance is minus 1500 and we are depositing 500 so very you can see the weird output it is showing your balance cannot be negative even you can see right now the thread t1 the thread one has executed and it performed withdraw operations right it has performed some withdraw operations and your balance is zero if your balance is zero so how can you perform some withdraw operations so you can add some condition over here right you can add some condition over here inside the withdraw function so you will come to the withdraw function or inside it you can add a if condition if your balance right if your balance is less than or balance is less than amount for example right so you will not be able to withdraw some amount right else you will be able to withdraw right so what can you do what can you do you can just display a message inside it or you can say if your balance is less than amount what will you do you can just wait okay you will wait means someone will deposit some money in your account do you understand so in this case what we are doing we are creating or we have created two threads two threads are executing these two operations simultaneously and you can see that it is showing a weird output your balance cannot be negative so until and unless your account will not have some money you will not be able to just withdraw it right so what the condition we are applying here if your balance is less than amount so what will you do this thread will wait this thread will wait until someone will not deposit some money inside it right so i'm just calling this wait function and you can see it always throw an exception of type interrupted exception so you can just add a throws declaration also or you can surround it with try or catch so i'm just surrounding it with try and catch understand so it will wait if someone will deposit some money or you can see what is the use of wait function it causes the current thread to wait until it is awakened typically by or being notified or interrupted so this function will wait but i don't know by when it will wait or when it will awake right who will wake up it right 
So I can just add a small statement inside it system.out.println or I can write waiting for your balance to update. Waiting for your balance to update. Okay, so balance balance to update before withdrawal withdrawal of or you can write some amount in the dollar also plus amount so you will just wait till someone will not deposit some money inside it okay so i'm just right uh, just showing a small message waiting for your balance to update withdrawal of this amount okay so this condition i have added inside a withdraw function now let us run this program let's see what the output will be right so let us run this program and you will see what is the output so here we go you can see it is showing a message waiting for your balance to update before withdrawal of 1500 or you can see it is waiting right it is waiting and the second thread is executed during that time right so how this work guys just understand the concept of wait function so you can see the thread one or thread one has called the function withdraw function and you can see initial balance is zero and you are trying to withdraw the 1500 or 1500 dollar right so here the situation is your balance is less than amount so in that case it is showing a message waiting for your balance to update before withdrawal right and it is waiting we don't have any time and no one is wake up this function right no one is notifying this function okay your time your waiting time is over now you can perform the rest operations so it is showing this output your thread one is waiting and during that time the thread two has executed this code deposit function or it is showing a message we are depositing the amount right but the withdrawal is not performed it is on the long wait it is on the long wait still you can see your program has not terminated your thread one is waiting thread one is waiting means someone will notify the thread one in order to perform some withdraw operations so how will you notify it so here you can see inside deposit for example when thread 2 will deposit some money in your account so you will call the notify function so you can see you can call notify function and how this notify function will work right what it does so it will notify what it does it will notify thread it will notify thread after depositing money so what this method will do right so what this method will do let me help you to understand when one thread is waiting right to get your balance updated so during that time during that waiting time some other thread will execute and will call the deposit function and will deposit some money and notify so what this notify function will do this notify function wakes up a single thread please remember it wakes up a single thread that is waiting on this object monitor right so who is waiting since a long time this is the thread thread one right who has called the withdraw function so this is waiting so who will just notify this thread two will get the balance updated and will notify this notification will come to this part and this waiting time will be over when this waiting time will be over it will perform this this uh, you know uh, withdrawal operations do you understand guys so this is the way how we are just performing the withdrawal operations so let me just run this and you will just see what is the output of it so let us run this program now guys you can see it is showing waiting for your balance to update before withdrawal of 1500 after this during this waiting time the another thread is active and has called deposit function and it has deposit and 
just showing a message or notifying a message we are depositing this amount five thousand dollar and this notification will move to this longest waiting thread and this waiting time will be over and it will perform this withdrawal operations and it will display withdrawal successful the current balance is 3500 so whenever you will run this program again you can see the output right waiting for your balance someone has deposit some money and you can see the final balance is this one right so if you will not use guys if you will not notify right so this thread t1 thread t1 will go for a longest waiting period and it will wait and will not terminate so guys i hope you understand the concept of wait and notify right so if you will just add a notify function after performing some deposit operations so the longest waiting thread will get the notification means the waiting time is over and it will perform the desired operations right so this is about the notify function and here you can see it wakes up a single thread if you will use the notify all so notify all method what is the meaning of notify all method so it wakes up all the threads are waiting on the object monitor so there is a difference between notify all and notify function so notify wakes up a single thread who is waiting to get a monitor lock and notify all function will wake up all the threads who are waiting right so guys i hope i will be able to understand you the concept of waiting and notify and notify all functions so guys if you understand this concept very well please write your feedback on the comment section i hope you understand this concept very well or in the next session we will understand a very important problem statement of synchronization where you will use the wait and notify concept that is known as the producer and consumer problem that is a very very important problem so guys you can have a final look this is a banking class this is the deposit function both method must be synchronized now we have created two threads one is doing withdrawal operation and one is doing some deposit operations inside main class we are just creating an instance of a class or we are just starting the thread so thank you guys thank you for watching this videos bye bye for now have a great day all the very best